to starting newish work today. Don't want you to draw the following. Just want to talk to you about it. Now, while I'm drawing it, you really don't have to draw it. It doesn't influence anything that you are going to learn today. We'll only learn about this at a later stage. Um, if you think back to the work that we've done with a triangle, okay, if we wanted to calculate a triangle's area, do you agree we needed to have a 90 degree angle or a perpendicular line? Okay? And when you worked with trigonometry, we also needed to have a 90 degree angle when we do normal sin, cos, and tan. Do you agree with that? Okay, but are all the triangles in the world right angle triangles? Do you have a perpendicular line of all the triangles that are not right, tri or right angle triangles? No, we don't. So do you see that there is an a, um, unknown part? There's something that we can't do that we need to be able to do. And that brings us to the work that we are learning about today. Now, we are learning about the sine, the cosine, and the area rule. Now, the area rule is the one that we're going to do last. That's why I'm saying don't copy this now. We're not doing area rule now. I just want to explain to you why we would ever need the sine and the cosine rule. So, when you want to calculate the area of a triangle that's not a right angle triangle, we say that you need two sides and one angle included. You know what the included angle is? That means it's side angle side. Now, in, if you look at this triangle, M and P, is the angle included, yes or no? No. The included angle would be angle P. So we need angle P. The reason for that is the formula, the normal formula for the area is a half times base times perpendicular height. And I'm going to show you the whole proof thingy that we can change this to a half um, M N sin P. Okay? So that's going to be how we can use it. That's why the angle has to be included. But now the angle is not included. So we are going to learn the sine and the cosine rule that enables us to calculate any of the unknown sides or angles of any triangle. Okay, doesn't have to be a right angle, right angle triangle. So in order for us to calculate this angle and the moment that you have this angle, you can calculate the area. Do you understand? That's what we're working towards. <coughs> and that brings us to the first one we are learning about today. And you can write this down now. It is the sine rule. Sine rule. Now I'm first going to show you the application of this and then maybe tomorrow or when we have time I will show you the proof of this theorem because this is also a theorem um, that will just make it, it's, it's quite a difficult theorem but it, it just will make it easier for you to understand why this works. Okay, you will notice that the two things I've written down is basically exactly the same. The only thing is when you're calculating an angle, the calculation is much easier if you put the angle at the top. And if you're calculating a side, it's easier if you put the side at the top.
Okay, when you look at this example, can you see that you have got two sides and one angle and that the angle is not included? That is what you need in order to use the sign rule. Two sides and one angle, but the angle must not be included. Now, I'm going to show you now why the angle should not be included. I want you to write down the full, or, or let's just write down what we have to calculate. to calculate angle C. And B. Okay, so because we're calculating an angle, we put the function at the top. done. Now, it's not necessary for you to do the following before every question, but I just want to do it now so that you can see what happens. Um, so I'm going to tick what information we do have. Now, I have angle A, and I have side, oh, let's just name the sides first, sorry. Um, you see they are referring to small letter A, B, and C here, that's not on the, on the sketch. Now, whenever you have a triangle, the angles will be named with the capital letters, and then the side opposite from the angle is that letter small number, a small letter. So in other words, if I look at this angle A, the side opposite from it is the side that's 12, and therefore this side is called small letter A. So what will this side that's 15 be called? C, and what will this side that's unknown be called? B. Okay, so if I now go and look at what of the information is available, and what do I want to calculate, I have angle A, it's 40 degrees, right? Do I have side A? Yes. Do I have angle B? Do I have side B? Do I have angle C? Do I have side C? Yes. Okay. Now, do you notice that we have one full ratio where we have both of them? Now, for that reason, it's important that your angle is included. If A was not included, if, let's say, you had angle B, you wouldn't have a full ratio. You would have an unknown in each one of them, and therefore, you wouldn't be able to use the sign rule. That's why the angle must not be included. Does that make sense? Okay. Now... When you've got a ratio where you've got three things, you're not going to use the whole thing. You're going to use the full ratio, and you're going to use the one that you want to calculate. Now, can we calculate B at this stage? We cannot calculate B because we've got two unknowns. Do you see that? So therefore, the choice that we will make to start off with is we want to calculate angle C because then we only have one unknown. We have both of these, and we, here we have one of them. So we can calculate it. So it's going to look like this. You're going to say sin A over A equal to sin C over C. Now, 
Once you're comfortable with the sign rule, you can immediately start with this. You already notice those are the those two are the full ratio that you're going to need, and you want to calculate angle C because you've got side C. Okay, so that's not necessary. Now, if I substitute in here, it's going to be sin 40 degrees over 12 equal to sin C over 15. Right. Now the next part um, is not compulsory, but it is important to me that you do it in this way because I know what the level four questions look like. And what we do there is we man manipulate the sum first to get C alone. Okay, so if you just focus now and look, it's not that hard. I want to get C alone, so I need to take the 15 over. What's it going to do on this side? Multiply. So it's going to look like this 15 sin 40 degrees over 12, but now I have sin C on this side, still I, so I still have to take the sin over. I have to separate the sin from the angle. Do you remember how we do that? How do we type it on our calculator? Shift sin. Now to write it, we write sin minus 1. That means shift sin. So I just want you to take a look at this manipulation, because that's very important. Okay, you must... You, I, you won't lose marks if you do it, don't do it here, but you need to be able to do it for the level fours. And then take out your calculator, type it, everyone. I want to see that you can do it on your calculator. You are supposed to get an answer of 53,46 degrees. Did you get that? Who's struggling? Shift. Uh, let me type it on the calculator, then you type it with me. So we type that one first, shift, sin, and then you can make a fraction, 15, sin, 40, over 12, close your bracket, equal to, gives you you understand? Yes. Okay. Now, we still need to find angle B. But we still don't have side B. Is there someone that has a plan for us to find angle B? You don't need to be in grade 11 to be able to do it. Okay. So to find angle B, all we need to say is we're going to say 180 degrees minus 40 Minus 53,46 degree, uh, yeah, degrees, and that gives me an answer of 86,54 degrees, and my reason is interior angles of triangle.
Are you done? Okay, let's go to example two. Okay, let's put in our small letters. That's the first thing we must always do. Uh, the 13 that's given, what is that side's name? This PR. This QR. Do you see something that we can calculate already without doing anything? What is it? Angle P. Now, if, it, if at any stage we want to calculate these, both of these two uh, sides, we're going to need the angle. So just start off by calculating it, and then you know you're done. So we can say angle P is going to be equal to 180 minus 110 minus 40, it's 30 degrees, and your reason is interior angles of a triangle. put it in somewhere so you can see it. Okay, which one do you want to calculate first, P or Q? Doesn't make a difference because you've got all of the angles. What is the complete ratio? Which letter has the complete ratio? That we have the angle and the side of. R. Can you see? We have R side, R angle. Okay. So that one we're definitely going to use. And we want to calculate a side now. So we're going to put the small letters at the top. So let's just start with Q. It doesn't make a difference. Q over sin Q is equal to R over sin R. You understand that? So it's Q over sin 110 degrees equal to 13 over sin 40 degrees. Now, if I want to get Q alone, I have to get rid of the dividing by sin 110. So what's going to happen to it on the other side? No, no, I don't want to separate them. No, I want to move the whole sin 110. That's a very good statement. Do you hear what the one is asking? At the previous one, we pressed shift sin. That was because we wanted to separate the sin and the angle. We don't want to separate it. I want to move the whole sin 110. Remember, that's like a value. That's like 0, 0,4, whatever. Don't know what it is. Ma, whatever that value is, I want it to go on that side. So if it's being divided here, it needs to be multiplied on the other side. So if I write it like this, it's 13 sin 110. If you can do this before, and that also sorts out any problem of you possibly a rounding off incorrectly or rounding off too early because then you just keep losing marks. That's totally unnecessary. Okay, take your calculator. This is much easier. 13 sin 110 
divided by sin 40. See if you can calculate it for me, please. You are supposed to get 19 units. And um, the last couple of question papers from the department, the instruction said that you round off according to the question. Okay, so what that means is you are calculating a side length. Ne? One of the side lengths are given. What is that side length rounded off to? Whole number. So what are you going to round off to? Whole number. So if this side length was given as 13,2, that's one place after the comma, then you're going to round off to one place after the comma. So according to the question, you do what is done, what has already been done at the question. Okay. All right, now we're going to have to calculate P. Do you want to try it yourself? Not yet. Okay, let's quickly do it. I want to calculate the small letter P. So it's small letter P over sin capital letter P equal, uh, equal to. And now, because you've calculated Q, you have the option of another full ratio. Do you see that? But don't ever use the one that you calculated if it's possible for you to use the one given. Because if you made a mistake, then obviously I mark with your mistake, but you will start getting horrible answers. It won't work out nicely, okay? So rather use the one that was given. It's R over sin R. Okay, substituting P over sin 30 degrees equal to How do I get P alone? What must happen to sin 30? Multiply, so it's going to be 13 sin 30 over sin 40. And you can quickly try to type it. Just check so that you know you're doing it right. That gives you 10 units. Round it off to whole number. Did you get that? Okay. So that's what the sine rule does. Now the cosine rule does the same thing. The rule just looks a bit different. Okay. But you've now seen, you can only use the sine rule if you've got two sides and an angle. The angle not included. Or if you've got two angles and one side. Now what if you have two sides and an angle that's included? Then you can't use it. So therefore, we have the, the other rule, which is the cosine rule for two sides an included angle and for three sides. So let's just quickly write down the cosine rule. Now you will notice that the cosine rule does look a bit more complicated than the sine rule. Please don't let it stress you out. You will get used to it and we are going to work with it a lot and you will know it well. Go. Look at, look at the first one. We're going to write down three different rules, but it's the same rule. If I start with a squared, that's the side a, ne? then I'm going to say equal to, then I'm going to square the other two sides, b squared plus c squared. Okay? So all three of the sides occur. Minus 2, and then these two again, b, c. Was that hard? Will you remember that? Now the last part where the cos comes in, cos, and the same letter as the one you started with, but in the angle. So it's A, B, C, B, C, A. A, B, C, B, C, A. So let's try it uh, for the other one. If we start with B squared, close your, your own so you don't copy that. B squared is going to be equal to a squared plus minus A. See, there you have it. It's not that hard. It just looks complicated. 
And now you can close it again if you want. Let's write it down for C. It's going to be C squared equal to plus minus cos C. You use this rule for two sides and one angle if the angle is included or for three sides. Then you can write example one. It's not difficult, man. It's like only substitution. You must just know the rules. And remember in grade 12, you get a formula um, sheet. Do you know that? with all of the formulas on it, but not in grade 11, unfortunately, so you have to learn it. And in grade 12, if you copy the formula wrong from the formula sheet, you get zero for everything. That's why it's very important, and it's a good thing that up until grade 12, we learn the formulas first. Then if maybe you forget one small thing, you can refer to the formula sheet. But other than that, other than that, record. Other than that, you know it in your head. Okay, you're not even going to use the formula sheet when you get to grade 12. You shouldn't, because you must know them very well. Okay, example one. Okay, let's pretend that this was mi these were mixed examples. You don't know whether you're using sine or cosine rule. Then you look at what is given. You are given two sides and an angle, and the angle is included. You remember I said then you can't use sine because you need one full ratio. But the cosine says two sides, and the angle must be included. Okay, what we want to calculate here is the length. How do you spell length? length. Huh? T. Where does the T go? Thank you. Okay. Length B C. Okay, before we start, we put in our small letters. What is 10? What is 12? What is unknown? Which one do we want to calculate? A, okay. Let's see if we can write down the cosine formula without peaking. On to next. Without peaking. Okay, so I'm going to start with A squared equal to... Ah. The, the side that you start with is the angle that you use. So it makes it pretty easy. If you wanted to calculate C, you would start with small letter C squared. Do you understand? Go. Okay.
Okay, can we substitute? A is the one we want. B is 12 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 12 times 10. Of course, 125. Type it in your calculator and then once you've typed it, I want you just to stop. You can press equal to. Then you get an answer of 381,65. 381,65. Did you get that? Yes. 381,65. Did you all get that? Yes. Okay. When you look at the other sides, the one side is 10, the other side is 12. Does it make sense for A to B? 381,65 what 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 no because we haven't taken the square root okay so now you press square root and then you press ans just press square root ans equal to and then it gives you an answer of 19,54 units if you had to round off according to the question, you would round it off to 20 units. Because the other sides are whole numbers. Is that easy? I think so. Substitution, <coughs> calculator work. Now we're going to look at the last example. Now the last example is where we use the cosine rule to find the unknown angle. Now this is, with the substitution, pretty much the, m the most tricky one. Because uh, there's a lot of things in this, equa or, yeah, in this formula. You can see there are a lot of things happening. What is given in this diagram? Three sides. So let's pretend we didn't know. Which rule can we use when we use when we have three known sides? Is the cosine. Because remember the sine rule has got an angle in each of the ratios. So I won't have a full ratio there. Okay, let's name the sides. 9.3, what is it? D. 6.9? 3.5? Okay, now we are going to calculate angle D. So if I want the capital letter D in the equation, which letter should I start with? D. You start with the one or the angle that you want. Okay, so I want it to be cos D, therefore I start with D squared. Do you understand? If, I, if they asked for E, you would start with E squared. Okay, so D squared is equal to E squared plus F squared minus 2 D. Now I just substitute. Now I'm going to show you where the problem comes in with this question where learners make mistakes and why it's the most difficult. It's because of this part. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll show you why now. If you were to get D alone, <coughs> the first part would be easy. You would say 9,3 squared 
minus 6 comma 9 squared minus 3 comma 5 squared. Does that make perfect sense to you all? Okay, so we would say 9 comma 3 squared minus 6 comma 9 squared minus 3 comma 5 squared equal to minus 2 6 comma 9 3 comma 5 cos t. Now the first mistake that they make, when they write that side, they forget to write the minus. The second mistake that they make, if they do remember to write that minus, they tend to take this part with the numbers before cos. They tend to take it over and plus it. Okay. But what I've underlined here, and I need you to remember that, is that this is one term. So in order for me to get rid of this part, I'm going to have to divide by negative 2 times 6 comma 9 times 3 comma 5. Okay. I will get rid of the cos now. I cannot hear a single word that you were saying. Yes, you can calculate this beforehand. It's fine, I'm going to do it now. I just need to show you that this is division. Okay. So if you had calculated it, 9.3 squared, just don't round off, minus 6.9 squared, minus 3.5 squared. Then on the left-hand side, you would have 26,63 equal to negative. And most of the time... You might notice that if you were to add it on the other side, you would get an error. Because, um, do you remember, the cost cannot be greater than 2, ah, greater than 1, or smaller than negative 1, then you would get an error. This is what it looks like if you calculated it. So once again, it's division to get rid of this one. It's one term. Then you have cos D equal to, now if you say 26,63 divided by negative 48,3 and you calculate that on your calculator, you will see that you've got a decimal number very long. Don't round it off. Negative 0, 0,55, doiki, 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 doiki. But then you can say shift, cos, answer. And then only will you get the correct answer of D. I just want to write it down what I did so you know when you're doing, when you're studying what we did to get to that answer. And then D is equal to 123,46 degrees. Now if you wanted to get it alone without calculating anything, it is not that hard, or you would say is 9 comma 3 squared minus 6 comma 9 squared minus 3 comma 5 squared, which was easy, divided by negative 2 bracket 6 comma 9 bracket 3 comma 5, and then in front of it, shift cos, and that would give you D. So you are welcome to try to type that in your calculator. It will give you exactly the answer of 123,46. Then there's no extra steps, no places to make mistakes, no places to accidentally uh, round off. You will get the absolute correct answer. But that's just, you have to be, have some confidence with your calculator. Negative 2 times 6, 9 times 3, 5. That's that one. So this is not after I divide it. This is just this value. You understand? Uh, I'm sorry, what do you say? We want to calculate it. You 
cannot use the cos d because you don't have a d. That's what you want to calculate. Okay. So you cannot use this at all. Do you understand that? This is what you want to calculate. That's why we're going to use shift cos. Because we want to separate the cos and the d. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you what your homework is. You're going to practice this. It's exercise 17 on page 174. I want you to do A and E. And then exercise 18 on page 178. I want you to do A, B and C. So five of these. At each one, I want you to look at what you have and then decide whether you're using sine or cosine rule. And then calculate the unknown. Um, I just want you to take note that at some of them, I can't remember where it is, oh, it's at activity 18 or at exercise 18. They didn't name the angles. Now, this is something in question paper 2. If ever it happens that the triangle is not named, you go and name it. Okay. Because you cannot find the right labels or values if you haven't um, labeled it. Okay. So if the triangle doesn't have an ABC, you put in the ABC. Right. You can start already. Uh, there's uh, quite a few minutes, so five, seven minutes. You can start with one already and try to do it while you're here.